gymnasts who deal with the mental challenges that go with the physical demands. An athlete's mindset can be just as important as ability. Like any athlete, gymnasts need to be in the right headspace in addition to a great physical form to perform well. On the mat, it all looks fascinating for spectators, especially when gymnasts perfect a routine. However, what we don't know is what happens behind the scenes. Over the years, more and more athletes have been speaking up and thus shedding light on the dark side of gymnastics. They told me that I might not ever do gymnastics again. And I remember that was the first time I felt relieved. Imagine for someone who used to love the sport at a very young age to end up hating it so much she was relieved to be out of it. I don't know about you, but that's heartbreaking. For those who didn't know, Caitlin Ohashi made her debut in gymnastics at the age of three. When she turned 14 in 2011, she joined the U.S. national team. She was more than ready to do so, too, especially since this move only happened after many successes in national and international gymnastics competitions and after beating, among others, the future Olympic champion Simone Biles. Unfortunately, in 2013, shoulder and back problems put an end to her professional career. What's truly unexpected, though, was that she was more than happy to step back. In a podcast released early last year, Caitlin shared, my coach didn't want me to go to the doctor to figure out what was wrong. Because Wanted he, me knew, to keep pushing. he knew what was wrong. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. And that was the beginning of the end of her career. I just was in a back brace, said, I, said no mm -hmm. to everything. She was, however, able to bounce back from this. After a few years, Caitlin had the courage to recover and ultimately get back in shape and start again from student sport. While a leap into the darkness of amateur sport is something many athletes cannot bear, Caitlin has instead decided to conquer it as a challenge. And it turned out well for her. In fact, Caitlin Ohashi made her name known worldwide after a video of her joyous floor routine that earned her a perfect 10 went viral in January 2019. As of January 2023, the video has attracted over 242 million views. Curious yet? See that? Well, with just that short clip, you'd understand why it accumulated so many views. But as I said, we only get to see what happens on the mat when there are cameras around. The world of gymnastics is harder than you might think. And if you're already in that mindset that you're struggling with your twist, and then you start doubting, there's no going back. Perhaps by now you understand what I said about the pressure athletes go through, both physical and mental. What's more, Caitlin Ohashi is not alone in this, not by a long shot. However, as Dominic Mochianu said, it's not the sport itself that hurts us, it was the people, it was the adults. The sport made us and shaped us into who we are. Well, if we analyze Caitlin's statement, it was indeed a person who eventually cemented her dislike for the sport. It was her coach who refused to allow her to get checked out by a doctor. So, yes, Dominique was on point when she said that it was the people rather than the sport that hurt them. For those who do not know her, Dominique Mochianu is a retired American gymnast who was a member of the gold medal winning United States women's gymnastics team dubbed the Magnificent Seven after they won the USA's first women's team gold medal at the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta. Notably, at just 14 years old, she became the youngest U.S. gymnast to win Olympic gold. In fact, she'll always be the youngest since the International Gymnastics Federation later changed the age limits. In her 2012 memoir, Off Balance, Dominique described emotional and physical abuse from her coaches as well as her father. Sadly, Mochianu has said that she was blacklisted for speaking up about abuse in U.S. gymnastics, and she later became a vocal defender of the gymnast who were victims of Larry Nassar. In 2017, she testified before Congress about the culture of fear, intimidation, and humiliation that existed in the sport. This is probably why her goal today is to change that culture. Unfortunately, even with more and more athletes and former athletes being vocal about the rather unknown dark side of gymnastics, it continues. In fact, in June 2022, a gymnastics abuse report once again showed the darker side of the sport. 
Ann White's shocking report into the systemic physical and emotional abuse of young athletes had a devastating blow to the reputation of gymnastics. The White Review, as it was called, is an independent report that examined allegations of mistreatment in the sport of gymnastics. The review was led by Ann White QC, a highly respected and experienced British barrister with an extensive record of acting in complex criminal and civil litigation, as well as non-recent and institutional forms of abuse. The report, which examined over 400 complaints, uncovered that gymnasts were starved and made to hang from the rings as punishment, and some had their bags searched for food and weight management, among other failings. Sadly, if it weren't for the report, the British gymnastics probably wouldn't have published a series of new rules. And just so we're clear, athletes and gymnasts particularly from all over the world experience some sort of abuse. Sad, but true. It can be noted that Chelsea Memel, the seventh most decorated female gymnast in U.S. history, shared a few years back, let's say it's true. You can't have a certain level of success without leaving the sport broken. So, she says that she can now barely walk on her left ankle as a result of her time in gymnastics. But it was the emotional and mental stress on her while she was training that, she said, ended her career. I literally lost my ability to do the sport, she added. It is no secret that for years, calls to ease the authoritarian nature of gymnastics and what many say are the unreasonable demands it places on young athletes' spirits and bodies have been countered by a mantra of necessity. Inhumane training may be tough on an athlete, goes the thinking, but it's the only way to achieve dominance in a sport in which the window of opportunity is so short. Ex-gymnasts have long wondered if it is possible to reach the highest levels of the sport without harsh training methods and the consequent risk of early burnout. The broader culture of cruelty enabled Nassar to do what he did, said Jennifer Say, the 1986 United States champion, referring to former U.S. gymnastics doctor Larry Nassar, who was sentenced to 40 to 175 years in prison on sexual assault charges. Jennifer shared her sentiments on the matter in her 2008 memoir, Chalked Up, which was notably one of the first books to expose some of the physical and emotional abuse routinely positioned as fundamental experiences for success in the sport. And just recently, Leanne Wong, an American artistic gymnast, revealed in an interview that many gymnasts fall out of love with the sport of gymnastics since it requires such a tremendous amount of mental and physical strength. It can be frustrating when one is unable to get a certain skill and can't move up levels, she said. Needless to say, for gymnasts of great measure, falling out of love with gymnastics is not uncommon. Usually that can happen due to the difficult level of the sport. Add that to the fact that professional sports like gymnastics confront gymnasts with an enormous load of pressure, effort, commitment, and sacrifice, which only very few can bear. Overall, the world of gymnastics isn't all smiles and tumbles. It has a much, much darker side to it that all of us would be glad to see gone. Perhaps one day. Hopefully one day. Speaking of pressure about being the greatest, watch this to see how the fastest man alive chased success despite the pressure.